v sub x is negative 8, v sub y is negative 5. Let's find the overall vector. Please pause the video and give this problem a shot. You should start by writing down your positive axes. Okay, so now I'm going to write the components. Um, I could start by writing the x component, or if I wanted to, I could start by writing the y component. I think on this problem I'm going to draw the y component first, just for the heck of it. So let's draw the y component. v sub y is negative 5. You could draw the x component first, but now I feel like drawing the y component first. And then notice that this is pointing down because it's negative and the positive direction is up. Now we have to draw the x component. That's pointing to the left because the x component is negative and the positive direction is to the left. Now we have to draw the overall vector. Well, the overall vector should start at this initial point and end up at this final point. Let's label that's our overall vector. One thing we've got to do is find the magnitude of that overall vector. That's part of what this question is asking us for. But this question is also asking us to indicate the direction of the overall vector. Well, it would be natural then to find this angle, which we could label theta, or we could give it any name we wanted to. If you wanted to, you could find this angle. We could find this angle, but it's more usual to find the angle at the tail. It's more usual to find the angle at the tail of the vector. This angle is at the head of the overall vector. That, that would be um, pretty unusual for uh, this type of problem. So let's stick with finding the angle at the tail of the overall vector. That, 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 that's the way it's usually done. Asterisks indicate the information we were given. Also, I'll use an asterisk to indicate that I've decided to focus on this angle at the tail, as I mentioned. Let's label the hypotenuse and adjacent and opposite sides. You might feel like you don't need to keep labeling the hypotenuse adjacent and opposite sides anymore, and that's fine. If you don't want to label those anymore, that's fine, as long as you're not making mistakes. But if you find that you make careless mistakes without those labels, then it's better to keep putting the labels in. Well, once again, we were given two sides, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. Hypotenuse is what we don't know. We use v for the overall vector there, the magnitude of the overall vector. One leg we could call 8 in length, and the other leg we could call 5. There's no point plugging in the signs here because these are just all lengths. Well, as long as we're dealing with geometry, we're just dealing with magnitudes. It wouldn't make any difference anyway since we're squaring, but it's still better not to even plug in the, the negative signs because it wouldn't make sense since we're dealing here with the length of the leg and the length of the leg. We need to find 8 squared plus 5 squared. I believe that that is 89. Now we need to get v by itself by getting rid of the square, which we do by doing the opposite, taking the square root. And then we have to take the square root of the right-hand side. We're taking positive square roots because we want our answer to be a positive length. If you start with v and you square it and you take its square root, you end up back with v. And our calculator tells us that the square root of 89 is 9.5. magnitude of the overall vector is 9.4. If you wanted to emphasize that this is a magnitude, you could put a dot on top of this, but it's not strictly necessary um, because we don't need to distinguish between the magnitude and the sign uh, variable for an overall vector because an overall vector never has a sign. So you can put a dot or not on top of this for the overall vector, whatever you like. Either way, it represents the magnitude. Now, we're not done until we've also gotten the direction of the overall vector. When someone refers to the vector uh, with an arrow over it, they mean the overall vector. Uh, that includes the direction. So let's find uh, the direction over here. Well, we're going to indicate the direction by figuring out this angle. And again, we know the opposite and adjacent sides. Since we know the opposite and adjacent sides, since that's the information we were given, we should use the tangent. 
We could use the hypotenuse because we know that too now, but we weren't given the hypotenuse originally, so it would be more conventional to use the information we were originally given, the opposite and adjacent sides. Uh, the length of the opposite side is 8, and the length of the adjacent side is 5. Do not plug in signed numbers when you're dealing with trig functions. Don't use signed numbers for trig functions because here we're just dealing with the length of the opposite side and the length of the adjacent side. And we're going to get a confusing answer if we start trying to put in negative signs. In order to get the theta by itself, we have to remove the tangent function by doing the opposite of a tangent. Well, we've learned that the opposite of a tangent is an inverse tangent. If you start with theta and then you take the tangent of theta, and then you do the opposite and take the inverse tangent, you end up back where you started with theta. So theta is by itself the way we intended. Now let's do this in one step in our calculator. Um, use the inverse tangent. If your calculator doesn't put in a parenthesis, you have to put an N to indicate there's two parts here to the inverse tangent. And then you do the 8 divided by 5. 8 fifth is 8 divided by 5. Inverse tangent of 8 fifths. The inverse tangent of 8 fifths is 60. Approximately. That's part of our answer. Now, in order for your reader to be able to interpret this direction, you have to do one of two things. One thing you could do is just draw the picture and label theta, and then they know which angle you're talking about. Uh, if you don't want to give them a picture, though, you have to describe in words where this angle is. Well, then you would have to say um, that V is uh, a, making an angle of 60 degrees to the left of the negative Y axis. Can you see how this 60 degrees um, is to the left of this negative Y axis here? Uh, so this is 60 degrees to the left of the negative Y axis. This represents the negative Y direction, and we're to the left of that. So you could say in words that V has a magnitude of 9.4 and a direction 60 degrees to the left of the negative Y axis. Or if you don't want to use so many words, you can draw this picture and label that this length is 9.4 and that this angle is 60. taking a lot of inverse tangents here, so let's talk a little bit about this for a second. Um, when you're taking an inverse tangent, you have to plug in a number for the x component and a number for the y component. You might have noticed um, that we usually end up plugging the x component on the bottom and the y component on the top. If you look back at the previous examples, we've generally put the x component on the bottom and the y component on the top. But that does not always turn out to be the case. In this problem, we put the x component on the top and the y component on the bottom. You can see that in this problem, the x component is 8 and it ended up on the top. That's a little unusual. If you look at the other problems that we've done, I think that in most of the other problems we've done when we used a tangent, even though in this problem, the x component ended up on the top of the fraction, in most of the other problems, the x component, I think, was on the bottom of the fraction. Uh, so as usual, you can't make assumptions. You just have to work out each problem based on the details of that problem. Usually, the x component will end up on the bottom of the tangent uh, fraction, but not always. In some cases, as was the case here, the x component ends up on the top of the tangent fraction. Um, so you just have to think about the details of the individual problem. Don't make a rash assumption. Remember, your answer isn't finished if you just say that the magnitude is 9.4. You've got to indicate the direction using this angle. Remember that when I drew this triangle, I chose to first draw the y component and then the x component. I chose to first draw the y and then the x component, just because I felt like it. But it would have been perfectly OK if I had drawn the x component first. What would things have looked like if I had drawn the x component first? If I had started with the x component, I would have started by drawing this. And then I would draw the y component. And I would still get the same overall vector. But then, if I drew this triangle, it wouldn't be natural to focus on this angle anymore. Instead, we would have had to figure out this angle. You might have still called this angle theta, but it wouldn't be the same as this angle down here. Uh, we'd be figuring out a different angle. Uh, it's obvious now that if you had chosen to focus on this triangle, you would have gotten that this angle was approximately 30 degrees, because 30 plus 60 is 90, and we got a right angle here. 
So it would be perfectly okay um, to uh, have drawn this triangle instead and then indicated that the direction um, was indicated by this angle of 30 degrees. Either of those is okay as long as you're clear in your picture. Or if you want to describe this in words, you could say that we have a vector that is forming a 30 degree angle. Uh, it's pointing in a direction 30 degrees below the negative x-axis. Can you see that this is 30 degrees below the negative x-axis? Obviously this leg is pointing in the negative x-direction and we're below that negative x-direction. So you could say that the vector is pointing 30 degrees below the negative x-axis or you could have said that the vector was pointing 60 degrees to the left of the negative y-axis. Or if, you don't want to, if you're uncomfortable with all those words, you could just draw a picture and label um, one of the angles so that your reader can see what the direction is. Any of those methods is appropriate.